My name is Paula Politis. I am the antimicrobial stewardship pharmacist at SUMA Health Akron campus, and today we'll be discussing bacteria in older adults. Before we go into asymptomatic bacteria, what is antimicrobial stewardship? And this definition comes straight from the guidelines. It is coordinated interventions designed to improve and measure the appropriate use of antibiotic agents by promoting the selection of the optimal antibiotic drug regimen, including the dose, duration, and therapy, as well as the route of administration. Benefits of antimicrobial stewardship include improved patient outcomes, reduce adverse events, including Clostridium difficile infection or C. diff infection, and improving in the rates of antibiotic susceptibilities to targeted antibiotics or decreasing antibiotic resistance, and optimization of resource utilization across the continuum of care. So now that we've touched upon antimicrobial stewardship, let's move into asymptomatic bacteria. Here's our objectives for today to identify the risk factors for bacteria, explain the difference between asymptomatic bacteria, or ASB, and a urinary tract infection, or UTI, and to discuss the benefit versus risk of antibiotic use. Urinary tract infections in older adults are responsible for up to 15.5% of infectious disease-related hospitalizations in patients at least 65 years and older, it also accounts for 5% of emergency room visits in the same patient population. It is the most common infection that's diagnosed in patients who reside in long-term care facilities, and studies have indicated that up to 50% of antibiotics used for urinary tract infections in older patients were deemed unnecessary or inappropriate. Next includes some risk factors for urinary tract infections and asymptomatic bacteria you will notice that the risk factors are the same for either disease state. Such risk factors include history of urinary tract infection, urinary catheterization, the female gender, or urinary tract abnormalities. Certain disease states can predispose patients to have UTI or asymptomatic bacteria, including diabetes, dementia, or Parkinson's to name a few. Women who have estrogen deficiency are more likely to have either urinary tract infection or asymptomatic bacteria, and men with urinary retention or benign prosthetic hyperplasia are also at risk as well. So before we go on any further, what is asymptomatic bacteria? Is it A, bacteria in the urine, but the patient has no UTI symptoms? B, less than 10 to the fifth colonies of bacteria in the urine? C, non-pathogenic bacteria in the urine? or D, bacteria in the urine that have no symptoms? And the correct answer here is A, bacteria in the urine, but the patient has no urinary tract infection symptoms. Next, we'll review some myths and facts regarding asymptomatic bacteria. The first myth is that an abnormal UA or urinalysis indicates a UTI. The fact is that UA specimens are often contaminated in the older population if they're not received by straight cath. And even when they are done by straight cath and the culture comes back positive, most of these cases can be determined to be asymptomatic bacteria. The next myth is that UAs should be ordered as a routine screening test. The truth is that we should only order urinalyses when the patient has urinary tract infection symptoms. The next myth is that an abnormal UA explains weakness, fatigue, or change in mental status. The truth is, again, that the prevalence of asymptomatic bacteria in older patients is relatively high, so it's imperative to seek other causes of altered mentation, including dehydration, medication changes, etc. The next myth is that pyuria, or white blood cells in the urine, can differentiate asymptomatic bacteria from a urinary tract infection. The truth is that patients with asymptomatic bacteria often do have white blood cells in their urine. The next myth is that cloudy or foul-smelling urine is diagnostic of a UTI. The truth is that these changes are also seen in asymptomatic bacteria, and other causes include dehydration and certain medications and dietary changes as well. It's important to differentiate the type of urinary tract infection and associated symptoms. For the lower urinary tract infection, this is called cystitis. 
Symptoms include dysuria or pain on urination, frequency, urgency or the need to urinate, hematuria or blood in the urine, as well as incontinence. The patients can also have suprapubic pain. If it is the upper urinary tract, this type of infection is called pyelonephritis. The symptoms are the same as the above, however now we have more systemic signs of infection, including fever, chills, nausea, vomiting, costovertebral angle tenderness, and flank pain which can be found upon exam. If the patient has a Foley catheter, then we have what's called a catheter-associated UTI. The symptoms are pretty much the same as what is listed above. Assessing for UTI symptoms in older patients can prove to be a challenge. There may be communication issues. Is the patient able to communicate the symptoms? Also, these older patients may have chronic genitourinary symptoms due to other disease states. Thus, it's important to define the change in symptoms. Is there an increase in urinary frequency from the patient's baseline? Is there an increase in hematuria, etc.? It's also important to give caregiver education on monitoring for these symptoms. Is the patient grimacing while they're urinating? Are they utilizing more than usual adult diapers or bed pads? Do they have suprapubic tenderness on exam? and there also exists some standardized protocol for assessment of these symptoms. A 2015 Cochrane review analyzed patients being treated for asymptomatic bacteria. It included patients receiving antibiotics versus no antibiotics, and patients receiving antibiotics versus placebo. The results showed that there was no difference in the development of symptomatic urinary tract infections, complications, or mortality in the patients who received antibiotics. There was, however, higher rates of adverse events in this group. So the conclusion of this review was that there was no difference in outcomes of development of symptomatic UTI or complications or death. However, there was significantly higher adverse events in the patients who received antibiotics for asymptomatic bacteria. So there is no clinical benefit from treating asymptomatic bacteria. Why is this all important? More than 50% of antibiotics prescribed for presumed urinary tract infection are considered unnecessary or inappropriate. Antibiotics come with what's called collateral damage. We can predispose the patient to increased resistance, as well as adverse events. Up to 20% of patients taking antimicrobials may experience an antibiotic-associated adverse drug event while taking it. We also predispose the patient to Clostridium difficile associated diarrhea, a severe type of infection. We also have the increased risk of drug-drug interaction, especially in older patients who may be on several different medications, as well as increased cost, not only to the healthcare system, but to the patient as well. Treating asymptomatic bacteria, all harm, no benefit. There is a high prevalence of asymptomatic bacteria in our older population as we previously discussed. The bladder is normally colonized in many of these older patients. A positive urinalysis or culture in the absence of symptoms reveals colonizations, which is the presence of bacteria without infection, also known as asymptomatic bacteria. And treatment of asymptomatic bacteria, as we just discussed, is not recommended. It is hard to ignore a positive test. A combination of habitual testing and prevalent colonization in this patient population can lead to unnecessary prescription and missing the true diagnosis. Unnecessary antibiotics and misdiagnoses diagnoses harm patients overall. We run the risk of drug-drug interactions, kidney and other complications, drug-resistant bacteria not only in the patient but the community as well, C. diff infection, side effects of medications including nausea and vomiting, drug allergies, and again, missing the real diagnosis. So when do we want to screen and treat patients without symptoms of a urinary tract infection or an asymptomatic bacteria? So essentially, we do not treat any of the following patients, premenopausal, non-pregnant women, diabetic patients, older patients living in the community, older institutionalized patients, chronic Foley patients, or persons with spinal cord injuries. We should screen and treat pregnant patients 
for patients, urologic patients who are going to go undergo a procedure involving the mucosa. So when should you recommend your analysis? When the patient is symptomatic or has any of the symptoms listed on the right hand side of the screen. Altered mental status alone is not an indication for urinalysis, urine culture, or antibiotics. It's imperative to review alternative causes of delirium prior to UTI workup and treatment. If all other causes of delirium have been investigated and there's been no other attributable cause, then at that point it is okay to proceed with a urinalysis and culture. But the takeaway here is there's a high prevalence of asymptomatic bacteria in the older population. This slide lists all other causes of delirium. You'll notice there are several medication-related causes, including opioids, anticholinergics, alcohol or drug withdrawal, etc. The patient can also be sleep-deprived or have pain. They can be in physical restraints or have a bladder catheter. They may also be dehydrated or have electrolyte abnormalities or have hypoglycemia, for example. Stroke or hypoxia or hypertension or hypotension, ICU state, those will all also predispose a patient to delirium. Prior to assessing for a urinary tract infection, check for a new medication or herbal supplement. Has one been started? Has a medication been stopped in the last month? Is the patient constipated or have diarrhea? Does the patient have a fever? Are there signs of any other infections? Does the patient have pain symptoms newly out of control? Do they have any changes in sleep habits? This is a pathway to help you differentiate asymptomatic bacteria from urinary tract infection. So does the patient have signs or symptoms of a UTI? If no, no urinalysis or urine culture should be ordered. If yes, what are the particular symptoms? If the symptoms include changes in dysuria, frequency, urgency, hematuria, incontinence, fever, chills, etc., then at that point it is appropriate to do a urinalysis and urine culture and prescribe the patient antibiotics. If the patient has mental status change, cloudy urine, fall, foul smelling urine, lethargy, or weakness, and those are their only symptoms, it's not appropriate to do a urinalysis or urine culture at this time or start an antibiotic. Instead, the patient should be monitored and you should investigate other causes. It's imperative to determine if the patient has a urinary tract infection versus asymptomatic bacteria. This slide summarizes some of the differences. White blood cells in the urine or pyuria are definitely present in patients with urinary tract infection and may or may not be present in patients with asymptomatic bacteria. Both patients with urinary tract infection and asymptomatic bacteria will have a positive culture. Patients with urinary tract infection will have symptoms as listed below, while patients with asymptomatic bacteria will have none. Patients with urinary tract infection will benefit from antibiotics by eradicating the infection, whereas studies have demonstrated that providing a patient with antibiotics for asymptomatic bacteria has no benefit. Antibiotics may also cause harm in patients receiving therapy for UTI, and will definitely cause harm for patients receiving antibiotics for asymptomatic bacteria. Altered mental status associated um, possible with urinary tract infections, but very unlikely in cases of asymptomatic bacteria. There's almost always another cause present. So in summary, asymptomatic bacteria is common in older patients, Treatment of asymptomatic bacteria is rarely warranted and is not associated with a decrease in UTIs, complications, or mortality. Treatment of asymptomatic bacteria is associated with a significant number of adverse events. It is important to assess patients for symptoms of UTI prior to ordering a urinalysis or urine culture. And there are many causes of altered mental status, and altered mental status alone is not an appropriate indication for urinalysis or urine culture unless all other causes have been ruled out.
I've listed my email as well as phone number. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. And thank you for listening to my presentation.